welcome back to the breakdown. Today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to start a paper server in Minecraft 1.13.2. Paper is a newer development of the Minecraft spigot distribution basically. So bucket and then there's spigot and now there's paper. And paper is the most optimized version of a Minecraft server in existence. I mean they have done absolutely everything. Even adding an async chunk loading into Minecraft 1.13. So if you're running a 1.13 server and you want plugins on it and you want it up optimized and all of that stuff and running as lean and sleek as possible paper is the way to do it and I'm going to be showing you how to start a paper server in this video but first off if you want a server that is up all the time that's up 24 hours this server we're going to be creating here is only going to be for your friends and family it's not meant to be for everyone it's only meant to be for the people you trust and the people you know personally if you want a server that anyone can join that's not using your own computer's resources that's up 24 hours a day like our own network server play it breakdowncraft.com. If you want something like that, you need to get a server with a server host, and I recommend Apex Minecraft Hosting. Go to the first link down below, the breakdown.xyz slash Apex Network to get an awesome 24-hour DDoS protected Minecraft server running paper 1.13.2 with just one click. Yeah, you heard that right. No port forwarding, no anything. If you buy a server through Apex, it is just one click to get paper installed in 1.13.2. But nevertheless, if you do want a server that is just on your computer and is using your own computer's resources and only online when you're online and is only for your friends and family let's go ahead and jump on into this so the first thing we want to do is go to the second link down below and this is going to take us here which is papers download folder now we want to download the most recent build here because they are actively making sure things are up to date and working well as best they can there's a ton of people testing paper so any bugs get fixed pretty quickly but nonetheless let's go ahead and uh, click on the most recent download here It'll download in the bottom left, and eventually we're going to need to keep the file. There we go. Now we just need to click keep here, and the file will download. Now for me, it's going to be on my desktop, but if yours isn't on your desktop, don't freak out. Go ahead and hit the uh, Windows button in the top left up here. It's probably in the bottom left of your screen, right? It's going to open up this, the start menu, and then in here, just type in downloads exactly like that, and you should have this downloads folder. Most likely, paper will be in here. Take it from here and drag it to your desktop. Once this is on your desktop, let's go ahead and create a new folder and you can title this folder anything I'm just going to title it paper 1.13.2 so paper 1.13.2 and we can drag our paper file into it now once it's in this folder go ahead and open it on up and you should have this now I'm gonna rename this jar just for ease of use if you rename this jar the exact same thing that I rename it you can go to the description down below copy the code there and it will work otherwise you'll have to do some changing and once we get to that code I will show you what you might need to change we're just gonna right click on this rename it and then just rename it paperclip right so it's by default, it's Paperclip 434, whatever version you downloaded. We're just going to rename it Paperclip right like that. Now, I'm going to go ahead and head to the description of this video and find these codes. Now, these codes are actually what we're going to be using to run the server. And as you can see, if you want a 1 gigabyte server, a 2 gigabyte, 3, 6, 4, it goes down through the list down here and it's on the description. Now, I will say this. Honestly, for paper, you don't need to run more than a 4 gigabyte server unless you're going to be running a ton of plugins with a ton of players. For example, our server can have about 75 players on it and it has about 30 plugins on it and we run it off of 12 gigs of RAM, right? Basically, for every 10 players you have, you're going to need a gigabyte of RAM and for every 10 plugins you have, you're going to need a gigabyte of RAM. That didn't always used to be the case, right? Um, back in the day, you used to be able to run even a Minecraft 1.12 server off of very little RAM, but now uh, Minecraft's pretty RAM hungry when it comes to servers, even with the paper distribution, even though it's a lot more efficient than a vanilla server, a bucket server, or a spigot server. It's still going to require more RAM. However, for this, we could actually run it off of one gigabyte if we wanted to. So that's what we're going to do. All these are in the description and go ahead and copy it. And then let's go ahead back over to our paper folder here right click it create a new text document and then in that text document we want to go ahead and paste the code we copied from the description now if you didn't rename your jar file here you kept the version number in there or whatever you want to come here and make sure that whatever paper clip is called right whatever this jar file is called is reflected right here for example if we had left the 423 right if we do 423 there it's going to now open up that one if that's what the name of this was but as you can see ours isn't named that ours is just named paperclip so we want to go ahead and delete that and now it will work so go ahead and click file 
and then do save as, and then you want to save this as a run.bat file. But we want to make sure our save type as, or save as type is all files here, right? Save as type, all files, file name, run.bat, and click save. Now we go ahead and close out of this. We can delete that new text document we created, and on our folder here, on our folder, in our folder here, we have a run file. It should be a Windows batch file. You can go ahead and double click on that and paper will run for the first time. But it will fail. It will eventually say press any key to continue. And the reason it will say that is because you need to accept the Minecraft EULA. And accepting the EULA is actually pretty easy. Eventually it will appear here and there it is. As you can see, we can press any key to continue. Let's do that. And if we open up our EULA here, just in any Windows editor, notepad, notepad++, plus plus, anything will work, any text editor, and in here we want to change EULA equals false to EULA equals true, T-R-U-E, exactly like that, then go ahead and click file, save. Now we can run our .bat file by just double clicking on it, and this time the server will generate. It'll go through, it'll set up the world, it'll do all that stuff, and eventually it will say done. Boom, there you go. Do you see that? Everything's loaded in. I will see you guys once it's done loading. And there we go. It says done down here. See that? This is done. Boom, there we go. It is done. Now the server is up on your own computer. If someone was on your own network, they could join your server off of your IPv4 address. But what if somebody wanted to, you know, play on your server in there across the world or your friend down the street or your family member that lives, like I said, across the world, whatever. You can do that and have them play on your server by port forwarding. So let's go ahead, stop this server here and get it to where anyone can join it as long as you give them the IP. If you don't give anybody the IP, they can't join. So keep the IP to only people you trust, as we mentioned earlier in the video. But let's go ahead and open up that trusty start menu again. It's the top left for me. It's probably the bottom left of your screen. There's a little Windows icon. Click on that. And in here, we want to type in CMD. Exactly like that. It'll open up command prompt here. Go ahead, click on that, and you get this black text box. It looks... About similar, basically the same, as what we use to run paper, except in this one, we're going to type IPCONFIG, IP config, exactly like that, all one word. Hit enter, and it'll give us some information here. We're specifically interested in our IPv4 address and our default gateway here. Now, we mentioned earlier that if someone was on your own network and wanted to play on your server, they could join off of your IPv4 address, and that's the number you would give them, the one shown right here. However, if they're not on your network, you're still going to need your IPv4 address because we need to come over here into our server.properties file, which is right here. It's a properties file. We can go ahead and double click on it, and it will open up with Notepad. You may have to select Notepad when you click on yours for the first time, but in here we want to find where it says server IP. See that server dash IP, and next to that we want to copy our IPv4 address. In my case, it's 192.168.1.123. Yours may be completely different from that, and if it is, that's okay. Doesn't matter what your IPv4 address is. If it's different from mine, that's good. If it's not, that's fine too. Copy it from your CMD, from your command prompt over here, over into your server properties file. Then go ahead and click File, Save. Close out of that, and uh, now we need to port forward. So go ahead and get your default gateway over here. Open up your trusty browser, and then open up a brand new tab, exactly like this. Then you want to go ahead and type in your default gateway. I know for a fact mine is 192.168.1.1. There we go, and hit enter. And now we'll open up a login box that looks exactly like mine or most likely completely different from mine. And it doesn't matter if it is the same or if it is different, but it will open up some sort of a login box. What do you enter here? Well, in the description down below, you can find this, which is our link to how to find your router's password. It goes through four or five different steps on how to find your router's password. Everything from asking a family member or whoever set up your router to going on this website and trying the default information to then eventually having to contact your ISP. But most people can figure it out before they get to this one. So go here, go through these methods and figure out what your router password is. Then come back over here and you should be able to sign in. Now, as you can see, I have this little 
thing here, and I want to sign in with my username and password, not my router's information, because uh, I know what my login information is. Now, once you log in, your login is probably going to look completely different from mine. It's not going to have the exact same anything. It's going to be different in many different ways, but we're looking for something similar here, port forwarding. Now, if you can't find it in your router, go to this link in the description down below. It walks you through how to find port forwarding on your router and how to port forward on your router, but specifically this video right here, this is what we need to talk about. This video goes through all of the most common routers currently out there today, how to port forward on them, goes through it all step by step, put a lot of work into that video and uh, it will help you out in finding how to port forward on whatever router you have. But nevertheless, let's go ahead and port forward on our router here. Now for this, we're going to be looking in security. Now yours may be in security. It might be in advanced. It might be in advanced advanced. It might be an administrator. It might be in NAT gaming. It might be apps and gaming. It might be in NAT forwarding, right? Those are just a few names. For me, it's in security. Then after we open up security here, it's in apps and gaming. And then once we're in apps and gaming, we need to go to single port forwarding. Now yours again may be completely different, but what you're looking for is port forwarding of some type. It might be port forwarding slash port triggering. It might be in apps and gaming. Again, it might be NAT gaming, NAT forwarding, NAT management. It could be in a array of different places, but eventually you will see port forwarding with something like this, some sort of ID or application name basically just a name so we can recognize the port forward later. It'll have an internal port and an external port or port one and port two or it'll have an out port and an in port. There are so many different names for this but it should have two options for ports. Then it'll have some sort of protocol and then it will have some sort of device IP. We go ahead and add a new single port forward here. We can enter all this information. I'm just going to name this Minecraft. Our external port is going to be 25565, and as a matter of fact, so is our internal port, 25565. For anything mentioning port, anything at all that mentions a port, you will put in 25565. For your protocol, you're going to choose both, or you're going to choose TCP slash UDP, or TCP and T UDP. Basically, you want to make sure both protocols are selected no matter what. For our device IP, remember that IPv4 address we had right over here? That's what our device IP is. So in my case, it's 192.168.1.123. Exactly like that. And now we do, in fact, have a port forward set up. Go ahead and click Save. Click Apply and click OK. Boom, there we go. Now the hard part's done. Our server is running and joinable from anywhere in the world by anyone who we give the IP to. Again, only people you trust so people don't figure out where you live, so they can't hit you offline, all that stuff. Only people you trust. But go ahead and run your server by clicking on that Windows batch file. And while that's loading up, let's go ahead and open up Minecraft here. Now I'm going to show you that we are in fact running version 1.13.2. So I'm going to come in here and switch this to the latest release right there, 1.13.2. Click play and once that is done opening, I will see you on the Minecraft main menu. Once we're on the Minecraft main menu, it's joining the server like any other server. So if we click on multiplayer, wait, what is this? Play.breakdowncraft.com? The best! Best server ever? I think so. We put a ton of work into our own server, play.breakdowncraft.com. All the info is in the description down below. The IP has been on the side of the screen the entire time. It's in the pinned comment down below. Basically, this is what we put a ton of our time into. It's why I know so much about paper and about Minecraft servers. And uh, it's got survival right now. Skyblock's literally launching in a one week from now. So uh, yeah, come play with us, play.breakdowncraft.com. All the information is down below. But back to your server, your paper server here. If you want to connect to it, we can just direct connect here. And then we can go ahead and enter in our IPv4 address just to test everything is working. So 192.168.1.123. Now, you're not going to give that to your friends to join your server, right? This is just for you. Only you will be able to join off of that IP address. But it's a great way to just load in really quick and make sure everything is, well, in fact, loading. And it is. So cool there. Let's go ahead and show you how your friends will join the server. 
It's pretty simple. You want to go to the description down below and uh, go to this link right here, whatsmyip.com. It's going to show you your IP address. Now, for me, you can only see the last three digits, 128. And that's just to show you that this is a different IP address than what I used earlier, my local IP address. And this is the IP that you're going to send to your friends, right? You can also join off of it. So if we go ahead and copy this IP address here, open up Minecraft in a handy dandily, use that to cover everything in the background. We can then direct connect to our public IP address. Now, as we can see here, those last three digits are in fact still the same. And uh, we can go ahead and join server. So this is going to launch us right on into that same server that we were in. And if we actually pull up our console over here, we can see that in fact Nick's Games has uh, lost connection and then joined again right back there. See that? So pretty cool stuff. And I think there is uh, no denying we are in game here. But you see how fast chunks are loading? That is only doable in paper in 1.13, not in spigot. So uh, pretty cool stuff there. And yeah, your server is now up and running. If for some reason your friends can't join this server, it's an issue of some sort with your port forward, or it is an antivirus or firewall, either on your router, most likely on your router, or on your computer, blocking the connection. So make sure you go through and set your exceptions in your firewall on your router, as well as on your computer. And that's going to be different for every router and every computer. But overall, that's most likely where your issue is. Again, double check your port forward as well. But nevertheless, guys, if you have any questions, post them in the comment section down below. And if you're just looking for an awesome 1.13 survival server or skyblock server that you and your friends can play on, grief protect and all that awesome stuff, come play with us at play.breakdowncraft.com. I know you will love it. Just come try it. It doesn't hurt to join the server, see what you think, and then if you don't like it, you can always leave, but you'll stay because it's the best server in the world. Play.breakdowncraft.com. Anyway, guys, give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel for more awesome videos, and I'm out, guys. Peace.